How many of you missed the SOCOM series, a first party franchise for PlayStation that hasn't gotten a new game in at least 3 or 4 years? It did great on the PS2, getting 4 different games, it got 4 games on the PSP, and it got 2 games on the PS3 including SOCOM 4. But as far as the PlayStation Vita and PS4 are concerned, there are no SOCOM games to be seen and no announcements of any SOCOM games in development for the new PlayStation systems. There are some rumors and news about a spiritual successor to SOCOM, but no SOCOM titles to be seen anywhere. I am someone who doesn't like war shooters at all. But when I tried out some of the SOCOM games on the PSP, I loved them. I played through them, I loved the witty comments, I loved the tactical parts of the games. For someone that hates games like Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, the list goes on, it's strange to, to get into and be interested in a War Shooter franchise. That franchise is what we're going to talk about today. It may be a little bit weird starting with this game for my SOCOM retro reviews, but here is my official review of SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2. SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2 mainly takes place in a fictional country called Ajikistan, a cross between Afghanistan and Pakistan. There's a lot of corruption going on as well as human and drug trafficking, weapons and arms dealing, as well as illegal mercenary action. Fireteam Bravo is a set of US Navy SEALs sent in to correct the problems. This story synopsis isn't all that enticing, I will admit, but there are two reasons why I think the story is good and enjoyable. The first is the fact that there are a lot of CG cutscenes you get as you go through campaign missions, which really brings some life to some of the characters. The second is the witty comments that your AI partner gives you as you play through the game. SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2, just like the other Fireteam Bravo games, can be summed up by calling it a tactical third-person shooter. You have basic third-person shooting elements, but you also have various scenarios and situations that require you to have a strategy other than running through and gunning your way to the end of the mission. This actually doesn't work in a lot of missions, even on the easy difficulty. So with the strategy in mind, you would call it a tactical shooting game. As you go through the game from the very beginning, you will go through various missions. You have campaign missions and dynamic missions that you can go through. Campaign missions advance the story, dynamic missions unlock as you play the story, but they're all extra missions. You have main objectives, sub-objectives, and bonus objectives. The main objective could be rescuing a hostage, it could be taking down a mercenary leader, it could be blowing up a tanker. It really varies from mission to mission. The sub-objectives can be similar, but also different. Some sub-objectives require you to take out a camera and photograph evidence to take back to HQ. And of course, bonus missions aren't given to you, you just have to kind of explore and find them as you play through the game. They're not required for missions, but they do give you a, a little extra points. Before you start each mission, you do have a couple menus you can go through. You can go to the briefing to get information about what you're doing, but Armory is the most important one. This is where you can change your AI partner, as well as yours and their equipment. You have various firearms you can equip just like any shooter, assault rifles, sniper rifles, shotguns, the list goes on, but you only have so many slots and only have access to so many weapons at one time. You might be able to equip five health packs to use in the mission, body armor, and only one set of grenades. And you might have certain weapons you want to use, but you don't have enough points for them. There are two ways to get points for these. There are points that you can spend as currency, and there are points that work in a reputation system. The currency points are gained by completing ob objectives and missions. The reputation system is the most interesting part with the tactical part of the game. You do gain points for the reputation when you complete objectives, but you can get more points for reputations if you stealth take down enemies and just capture and restrain them instead of killing them. The nice thing about this ranking system is that the weapons unlock when you get a new rank rather than when you get so many points to buy them. Now let's take a moment to talk about the tactical part of the game. Even if you set it on the Ensign Easy difficulty, you're not running and gunning through this entire game. I guarantee you won't be running and gunning through the first five story missions before you have to stop and rethink what you're doing. This is a very difficult game and requires various strategies such as crawling to an area and sniping off targets with a silencer, 
to sending your AI partner in to clear out a room before you so you don't get a shotgun to the face as soon as you open the door. There are a lot of different strategy elements here. It's not really hard to figure out, but you can't just ignore the strategy elements and try to run and gun through the game because you will ultimately fail on even on the easy difficulty. Now while we're talking about the gameplay, I want to tell you what I don't like about the game. First of all is the save data. When you save your game, it's fine. You get a prompt to save your game when you start the game. You get a prompt every time you come back from a mission. However, those of you who have a PS Vita and a PlayStation TV, the moment you put your memory card in another Vita or another PlayStation TV, you will get this lovely message that says the save data was created on another system. It forces you erase the save data that you've worked so hard to make and make a create make a completely new one. Because of this, I only played this game on my PlayStation TV and Deca Vita 7 so I could record some stuff for the review that wasn't the tutorial mission. The other thing I have a problem with is the crosshairs. When you lock onto enemies, your crosshairs move towards the enemies. However, the camera sometimes hits walls and bumps away. There have been many cases where there was an enemy right next to a hostage. I would hold down the R button and most of the crosshairs would be right around the enemy, so I just start hitting the fire button. But the pointer on the crosshairs would be right next to them, pointing straight at the hostage. I would shoot the hostage and immediately get a game over. This didn't happen every once in a while. It happened a lot. Now, as far as length is concerned, you should expect to spend five, six, seven hours maybe with the game. There isn't as much replay value as there was when the game first released because the online multiplayer servers have been taken down. But even just with single player, you have a lot to do. As far as the presentation is concerned, this game runs surprisingly well. Visually, there's not a huge amount of detail like there is in PS Vita shooters like Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified or Resistance Burning Skies. but it came over pretty well from the PSP, there aren't a whole lot of jagged edges, and there's a fair amount of detail in the environments and the character models. I would say it's probably one of the best looking PSP shooters that you can play on the Vita. Other thing I want to tell you about the presentation is the frame rate. The frame rate is so smooth, you won't even believe that you're playing a PSP game. I would wager that the frame rate is somewhere close between 30 and 60 frames per second and on the higher end of that number. SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2 is something that a lot of people consider to be one of the best SOCOM games the PSP had to offer. On the downside there are some issues with the clunky controls and camera, there are aiming issues, and there are there's save data issues with it being locked to one system so you can't really pass your memory card between two systems that have the same save data. It's not a bad game, I enjoyed a lot of it, but there are technical issues that you just can't ignore. PlayStation Vita Reviews rates SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2 a 6 out of 10. If you'd like to comment on this further, feel free to below or head to my site at VitaReviews.net.